greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior and our King, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. We give God thanks for another wonderful day. We give God thanks for waking us up in our right minds. Hope everybody's okay. The message that I would like to bring forth today, I am going to take two minutes and speak to you before I get into the message. My last message was about Israel and the origin of the war and the reason for the war. What I would like to take these two minutes to talk to you about is the war in Israel right now is a sign that the end is near. Not the end of the world, don't get me wrong. The end of all system, all government system, where you get up in the morning, you do your nine to five, you work to pay bills, you send your kids to school, you go grocery shopping, get gas. That All that is coming to an end. I will do a message on that and let you fully understand that. So the war in Israel is letting us know that this, the end is near. Not only the war. Oh, wait a minute. To make things clearer, this war in Israel is going to get worse than it was before because they have been fighting in for decades. Like I said in my message, this war goes all the way back to David and Goliath, Samson and Delilah. But it's about to get way worse right now because the United States is going to join in with Israel, join the war. When the United States does that, all Arab terrorist group and Syria, Iran, other Arab countries that dislike America and Israel, they're going to join with Palestine. So this war is about to get way worse, way more bloody, way more innocent lives will be lost. Even Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem sur surrounded by the Gentile armies, lets us know that its desolation is near. That's prophetic. It hasn't happened yet. But from what is about to happen? Yeah, Jerusalem is about to be surrounded by Gentile armies. So this war is showing us the end. Not only the war, people. Pay attention to what's going on. This gender, transgender, LGBTQ, that's also a sign that the end is near. A man wakes up in the morning Oh, I think I'm a woman today. Gets the rights of a woman. Gets to use a woman's bathroom. Come on, that's foolishness. Instead of the government trying to fix their inflationary problems, they're trying to push filthiness, LGBTQ, and transgenderism on little kids in school. Look what Dwayne Wade did to his son. Come on, people, the end is near. It's straight chaos and mass confusion in the world right now. And Satan is responsible for that. Revelation 12 verse 9 lets us know that Satan is responsible for all the confusion. The Bible says Satan deceives the whole world. He's the reason for all this confusion. Because if a man says, I'm a woman, chops off his penis and put a fake vagina down there, you have to be confused. If a woman chops off her breasts saying I'm a man, that woman is confused. The mind is not right. And Satan is the one doing all this. Along with those two signs, Jesus said there will be no love no more. People don't have no love no more. I see that myself. Along with no love, wars and rumors of wars. You already spoke about that. Along with that, pestilence, that's diseases. Look how much diseases that's out here now that wasn't here before. Famines. If you pay attention around the world, a lot of countries are in famine right now. What else? Uh, disasters in different places. Over the last five years, how much disasters have we seen in different places? These are the sign that the end is near. Not the end of the world. God is going to destroy the world, but the end of the system. And when I mean the end of the system, the way we live now is about to be drastically changed. You ever heard a man named Carl Schwab, the CEO of the World Economic Forum, said that there will be a great reset. The population will own nothing and they will be happy. This is what I mean by your way of living is about to be over with. Because what's the sense in you owning nothing and you still be happy? 
the, the one world ruler, the Antichrist, is coming out with his one world government, one world religion, and one world currency. That's what I mean by the system ending and a new system is going to take over. But that new system, the Bible labeled that the tribulation period. Three and a half years of pure hell on earth. Jesus said the earth has never seen so much chaos and mass confusion ever like the tribulation period. The tribulation period is the worst time in the history of the planet. And I'm going to do a message about that later. That might be my next message, as a matter of fact. Might be. I have so much to speak about. So we can see the signs that the end is near. And what does that mean for us? As Christians, it means we need to stay studying our Bible, build up our faith, and build up our minds. We need to have the minds of Christ because it's about to get rougher. Trust me, people. It's not about to get easier, so don't tell yourself, oh, a couple of years from now, it'll be more easier. No, it's not. From here on out, it's going to get harder and harder. So as Christians, build up your mind, build up your faith by keep studying your Bible. Pray fast. Go to church. Just keep your minds on God. What does it mean for non-Christians? It's simple. It means the signs are here to tell you Get your life right with God by believing in Jesus Christ, getting baptized in Jesus Christ, studying your Bible, finding a nice church to go to. Might be hard, but there are some nice churches to go to. Oh, my bad. My apologize. Before you get baptized, you must repent for your sins the way you were living. That's what the sign means for non-believers. Because trust me, when God looks down from heaven, he don't see no Hindu, no Buddha, no Catholic. No Islam, no Christianity. He don't see none of that. He only sees Christian and non-Christian because of Jesus' death on the cross. Those who believe in Jesus and get baptized becomes Christian. If you don't believe and don't get baptized, you're a non-Christian. You're a non-believer. So God is looking at believers and non-believers. That's all God sees. So for the non-believers, these signs are telling you, get your right, get your life right with God so you be labeled a believer and a Christian and God will bless you and protect you. Now, let's get into the message. John 3.16 is where I'm coming from. Everybody knows this verse. Even if you're an atheist, you know this verse. Everybody knows this verse. But they really don't understand it, especially 17. But what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to read from 16 to 21, and then I'm going to break down 16, 17, and 18 to give you a full understanding. Because when I break down 16, 17, and 18, along with reading it, you will understand 19, 20, and 21. So let's get into that. God, may you give us your spirit so we can get a better understanding of your word. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Verse 16 of John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse 20, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Verse 21, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. That's powerful. Basically saying there's benefits in believing in the name of Jesus. There's benefits in believing in this man called Jesus. And to me, I always ask people, why is it so hard for you to believe in a man that all he talked about was love? That was his message, love. 
I mean, how can you not believe in a man that came to preach love? What other man you know that has came and talked to the people and preached love and died for that and died for that preaching of love? Even on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they have done. That's love. Before Jesus left, when he died and came back, he spoke to his disciples. He said, I'm leaving you with a command. Love one another. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your enemies. Love the man. Just preach love. So why is it so hard for somebody to believe in a man that just preached love? Why? Turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me show you why it's so hard for people to believe in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says this. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe in Jesus Christ who is the image of God. So if you're an unbeliever, the God of this age, which is Satan, has blinded your mind so you cannot see who this Jesus really is, who is the image of God. This is why you have so much people say, oh, there's no such thing as no Jesus. That's foolishness. I don't believe in no God. That's foolishness. Satan has blinded their minds. Basically, they cannot think for themselves. This is why they say the Bible is foolishness. I go through this all the time on social media. And when I see it, I just think back to the Bible and said, wow. Satan has blinded their minds. This is why nobody could get me to stop studying this book. I've been studying this book since I was 25, and I'm 51 now. No one could stop me. The only way you could stop me from studying this book is by killing me. Simple as that, because I will never stop. Everything I read in this book has manifested in the world. This is why I love God and I believe in God so much. So let's break down 16, 17, and 18. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I try to tell people that God, who you should believe in, is a good God. He's the one that invented love. His nature is love. When I ask Christians that's been Christians for 10, 15, 20 years, what's the nature of God? They can't tell me. They cannot tell me the nature of God. God's nature is love. This is why Christ, who is God, came to the world and preached love. If you become a Christian, God will give you his nature, which is love. This is why when people do bad things to good Christians, we just forget about it. If we see that person in need of something, we will go to that person and give them help, even though they've done us wrong. That's love. You cannot say you love somebody and then you want, excuse me, got a little itch in the ear. You cannot say you love somebody, and then if they do you wrong, you want to get revenge. That means there's no love in your heart. Only an evil person would want to get revenge. So we see that God's nature is love. And with that love, he gave us his only begotten son to die for our sins. Jesus came to die for our sins. And also to save us from the wrath of God, which I'll explain to you in the next verse. But... God sacrificed Jesus, his only begotten son, on the cross to show us how much he loves us. Some people might ask me, not might ask me, but some people ask me, how can Jesus be the only son of God when the angels are also labeled in the Bible as the son of God? I said, when you read this verse, you skip over one word. You see this one word is between only and son. So when you say son, always say begotten, if it's referring to Jesus. He gave his only begotten son, meaning, listen to me very careful, people. God is a spirit. He sits on his throne in spiritual form. God wanted to become a physical form, so he created the physical form called Jesus. After he created this physical form, he poured himself in this physical form, and now this physical form is known as Jesus, 
the Son of God, who basically is God because God poured himself into that physical form. So he's God the Father, who is the Spirit, and now he's God the Son, who is the physical form. People without the Spirit of God cannot understand that. So by Jesus being the physical form, being the nature of God in physical form, his title is begotten because he was begotten. The other angels, God did not pour himself into those angels. As a matter of fact, Jesus is the one that made everything else. In Colossians, the Bible says, chapter 1, I think that's verse 18, if I'm not mistaken, starting from verse 15, says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He was the first creation over everything. Before everything got created, Jesus was created first. So God created Jesus, and then after he did that, he relaxed, and Jesus created everything else. So Jesus is labeled the only begotten son because Jesus is God. No other angel have that title. So all the other angels are just sons of God. Like if you get baptized, you are now a son or daughter of God. Basically, you are a child of God. But Jesus is the only one with that begotten title. Let's move on. Next part of the verse, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Underline that word believe because that's what it's all about. If you believe, the next step for you to do is to get baptized. And you, once you get baptized after believing in Jesus Christ, you are now issued a basically a receipt of everlasting life. The only person who can mess that up is you unless you go against God after being baptized. So once you believe and get baptized, you're issued a surfer ticket of everlasting life in heaven. Now, once you die in your belief, basically you get baptized, you obey God's commandments and you die, you go to, you enter everlasting life because death is the gateway to everlasting life. Now, the flip side, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to perish. As a matter of fact, if you're living right now and do not believe in Jesus Christ, you're perishing right now. Even though you might say, oh, I got money. You got money. You got no wisdom. You got no knowledge. You got no direction. You don't know your purpose in life. You don't know where you're going. You're just confused. You're just walking around enjoying money. What's the sense of walking around enjoying money when you don't have any knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? Those are the three major things you need in life to survive life. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Are you wise? Are you a rich, wise person? No. Because if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you cannot be wise. You cannot have spiritual wisdom. You only have worldly wisdom. And God looks at worldly wisdom as foolishness. S spiritual wisdom is the best thing to have. And that only comes to a person who believes in Jesus Christ. So, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't believe in Christ, you're basically walking around in darkness. Once you believe in Christ, Christ shines a light on your darkness, and now you're able to see. Like the song said, I can see clearly now. I can see all obstacles in my way. So that's basically the benefit, one of the benefits of believing in Jesus Christ. Let's move on. Verse 17 says this, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is my favorite verse. Because that word condemn means a sentence to a particular punishment, especially death. So God did not send his son into the world to judge it or to destroy it. But he sent his son into the world to save it. This is the part you need to be screaming, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus for giving your life because if Jesus never came into this world we would have faced the wrath of God and nobody would be on this planet right now nobody but animals and insects and fishes in the ocean and the trees and the grass no human being will be on this planet right now if Jesus didn't come down and died on that cross Jesus saved us from the wrath of God look at the wrath of God in Noah days God flooded out, destroyed everybody because he said every time those people woke up, they were thinking evil to do to other people, 
24-7, they thinking evil to do to other people. So God said, I regret making man. They're too evil and wicked. I'm going to destroy them. But God saved eight righteous people who obeyed his commandments, Noah and his family. So when Noah three boys started repopulating the earth and they started growing in numbers, they started multiplying, they became evil again. And God says, you know what? I'm not going to destroy them this time. This time I'm going to show them how much I love them. I already showed them my wrath in the beginning. But this time I'm going to show them my other side. I'm going to show them my nature. I'm going to show them how much I love them. Jesus, go down there and die for their sins. I'm putting their sins on your back. Why do you think when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane asking God, take this cup away from me, Lord, not my will, but your will. That's the one time God never answered Jesus. Every other time God answered Jesus, every time Jesus prayed. This one time God said, no. Their sins, present and future sins, even past, are going to be nailed on your back on that cross. So God never answered Jesus. God really said, you know what? I really hate you now, Jesus, because all the sins of the world is on your back. So if it wasn't for Jesus coming into this world and dying on that cross, nobody will be here right now. Thank God for Jesus for saving this world. Through him might be saved. Let me read that verse again. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, to destroy it, or to judge it. But he sent them into the world to save it. So thank Jesus for coming into this world, dying on the cross. This is why when you do communion, the only reason you do communion is to acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross. This is why Jesus said, do this in remembrance of what I did for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The, the wine represents his blood. The, the bread represents his flesh. He died on the cross. His flesh got all cut up and mauled up. And the shoulder pierced his side and blood and water came out. Blood meant the forgiveness of sins. The water meant a new life in baptism. Because that's the only way to get God's spirit, to get close to God, is baptism. And you get baptized in water. So if it wasn't for Jesus, nobody would be here right now enjoying their newborn baby, enjoying their kids, enjoying the football game, enjoying barbecues, enjoying life. Nobody would be here right now if it wasn't for Jesus. This is why Jesus got the name above every other name. Because of him, we're here enjoying life. So what's the problem in not believing in this man called Jesus? Huh? Verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Let me read that again. He who believes in Jesus is not condemned, but he who does not believe in Jesus is condemned already. Let me read that again. He who believes in Jesus is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. That word condemned means, again, sentenced to a particular punishment, especially death. And it also means declared unfit for use, meaning if you do not believe in the name of Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ, basically, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you are declared unfit for use, meaning God can't use you. And you would want the God, the creator, the father of everything, the most powerful being in the entire galaxy, you would want him to use you. Because if he use you, he's going to also bless you. So if you believe in the name of Jesus, you're not declared condemned. You're not declared unfit for use. God say, I could use you. Because God only used those who believe in the name of Jesus, gets baptized in the name of Jesus, study their Bible, go to church. That's the only people God could use. Now, 
he who does not believe is condemned. So if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you stand the punishment of death. You, you stand the judgment of death. You also are declared unfit for use because God will not use you if you do not believe in his son. One thing I tell people, you will go to a regular person looking for work, but you won't go to God and let God use you for work. So God will only use those who believe in his name. God will only bless those who believe in the name of Jesus. God is not paying attention to the unbelievers. Because guess what? Even though he's not paying attention to the unbelievers who do not believe in Jesus, they still get blessed. Why? How? Number one, God still loves them. That's why. Number two, they still wake up in the morning. You ever wondered why God keeps evil people waking up to do evil? Why he keeps, why he wakes up the murderers to continue murdering? If people pay attention and stop criticizing God, they will see the love of God. So if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you are perishing even though you are living. Because if you die not believing in Jesus Christ, you will enter hell and you will be in torment forever. And the worst part about hell is when you look up, you see people in heaven. That's the worst part about hell. You're already in torment, but when you look up, you see people enjoying themselves. And the only thing you're going to say, why didn't I believe in this man, Jesus Christ? But you didn't believe, you died, so you woke up in hell. For those who believe, they have a ticket of everlasting life. So no matter how you look at it, you die not believing in Jesus Christ, you're going to be tormented forever. You die believing in Jesus Christ, you're going to be in paradise forever. But don't get it twisted, people. Just believing in Jesus alone is going to get you to heaven. No. Believing also comes with obeying. Just because you, 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 you believe in Jesus, that, that's not a ticket for you to get baptized and go living wrong, go doing evil. No. Along with believing, you get baptized, you do all the commandments of Jesus Christ. Like Joshua said in Joshua 1.8, be careful to do everything written in the book of life. So in order to make it to heaven, you must be an obedient Christian. And if you are an obedient Christian, your name will be written in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, Jesus' book of life. That's the only way your name gets written in the book of life. You are an obedient Christian in everything God tells you to do in this Bible. So you see, there is benefits in believing in Jesus Christ. There's benefits in believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Good, wholesome, rich benefits. Because in the name of Jesus, demons got to flee. We end our prayer in the name of Jesus. We give thanks to God in the name of Jesus. Everything is around Jesus. Everything is based around Jesus. That's beautiful. With Jesus comes knowledge, wisdom, and understanding if you believe in him. With believing in Jesus, you get a wealthy, rich life. Because go back to Joshua 1, 8. Be careful to do everything written in the book of law that your way may be prosperous and successful. There is rich, prosperous, and successful benefits in believing in Jesus Christ. So to all you non-believers, try your best to get Satan out of your mind. And the only way you could do that, go start sitting in churches. Pick up a Bible and start trying to read it from Genesis. God will help you get Satan out of your mind once he sees you take the first step. Because once you go to a church and you're saying, oh, God, help me to come to you, and you try to read the Bible, God will see that your heart is pure because we can't fool God. He will see that your heart is pure, and he will help you. He will start shining some light on you so you could so you could get Satan out of your head and come to Jesus. But you have to start. Like I said, the, again, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Satan has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot come to Jesus Christ. So it's benefits in believing in the name of Jesus Christ. It's big, rich benefits.
that's the end of my message. I wish you all a wonderful day. I wish you that God give you the desires of your hearts. And God richly bless you. In the name of Jesus, our King. Amen. All you non-Christians, believe, get baptized. Excuse me. Believe, repent of your sins the way, the way you used to live. Get baptized. Grab your Bible. It's important you study this. Find a nice church to go to. I know churches are crazy, but there are good, wholesome churches you can go to that teaches the word of God. So, believer. Believers, you keep strengthening your mind in God because the times are evil. Like the Bible said, the days are evil. And these signs are telling us to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. But before Jesus Christ come, Satan is going to send his son on the earth. And for three and a half years, pure hell on earth, as you can see, it's already starting. So with that being said, my message is on YouTube. I titled them. You could just go through them and, and learn. May God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.